So I want to welcome everyone to this webinar on mastering video interviews. Today, I'm going to share some tips on how you can master your video interviews. Uh, the great thing about this content is it's, it's relevant for both employers and for candidates doing video interviewers. So I'm going to share some things that both the employer and the candidate uh, can use to prep for your video interviews. So I know a lot of times it's either one or the other, and there will be times that it, it's obvious that this is for a candidate, uh, but I wanted to put something together that I hadn't seen where both parties are prepping for the interviews. Because the thing about an interview is it's a conversation and it's a connection between a, a, a prospective employee and the employer. And that communication only goes well if both parties know the rules of engagement. And so I've been doing this for the past couple, past uh, couple of decades. I've been working on talent acquisition and diversity recruiting, but really for about 10 years, I've been involved as a champion for virtual and video interviews. And I'm amazed to see some of the technology and how the technology has evolved. And so today, if you can walk away with a couple of nuggets, uh, that will improve your video and virtual interviews, uh, that's a win. So the five tips that I'm going to share, and there's going to be a lot of content in here, so we'll make this video available. But the really the tips that I'm going to I'm going to talk about the benefits of video interviews. I'm also going to talk about how you expand and evaluate a more diverse pool of talent in your interviews. And then really, how can you leverage your existing processes and maximize the improved technology to really get the most out of your video interviews. And then I wanna, wanna chat a little bit about how do you mitigate bias traps that show up when you're actually doing a video interview? And then uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna end with how do you get the most out of your video interviews? So the benefits of the video interviews are, it provides flexibility in, in, in scheduling. Uh, it saves you time and it gets the speed of the discussion it improves the speed of discussion. So you're not waiting to schedule someone. You can actually have a very rich and robust conversation with the candidates that you are you're reach, looking for. Also saves you money. It saves you money from being from having to put people on planes or in cars and travels. And it also gives you the opportunity to improve the consistency of your interviews because you're going to be asking the same questions of all the candidates in that interview, and you can evaluate the candidates against those questions. Uh, it also gives you the opportunity to really pre-screen candidates in a more robust and rich way before you bring them in for on-site interviews. And that richer experience goes a long way, as long as you can mitigate and keep yourself from getting biased because you're now seeing the candidate, which potentially has risk with bias, because of that visual that you're gonna have. Uh, this also gives you though the opportunity to showcase for the company to showcase more about the company, to showcase more about the job because you can screen share and do all kinds of other things. And for the candidate, it gives you an opportunity to really showcase your skills. And if you've got projects or things that you're gonna share, you could share screens and showcase that information as well to make a big difference and just kind of the richness of the communication between the employer and the candidate. Um, one of the things that I want to make sure you, you, you really take to heart is these video interviews give you the ability to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation, which a lot of them are, but you can also do a one-to-many conversation where you have multiple interviewers talking to a candidate, or you can have multiple candidates um, on various interviews that you're going to be doing and just keeping keeping track of those is, is really important. So let's talk a little bit. I'm gonna look and, and just see if I, if there are any questions. I don't see any questions in the chat bot, chat window yet, uh, Dan, Daniel. Mine's a little bit covered up, so I'll get you to help me uh, keep an eye on that. What I wanna talk about here is really expanding your access to talent. You can expand the pool of talent that you have the opportunity to access because now you're not restricted to a physical location. This requires you to partner with your recruiting team, especially if you're trying to diversify the workforce. And once those interviews are set up, it doesn't matter where the person is. You can really talk to anyone on the planet uh, with that improved 
interviewer uh, interviewer capability. You can talk to anyone out there uh, that you can get in front of a camera uh, who has a, a, an interest in a company, and it might not be your company, but if your recruiting team goes out and finds these diverse pools of candidate, now you have the opportunity to talk to more people who may not be in your local geography or may not be in a position to travel. Now you can talk to candidates in remote locations. Uh, you can connect with people in a variety of companies. And if you have remote roles, you can get people who are really looking for that remote job and it expands the pool of people that you can talk to. This also gives you the opportunity, how do you reach someone who is mobily restricted? Maybe you have someone with a physical disability who can't move and who can't get into a regular office setting, but they have the background and experience and the skills that you're looking for. This gives you the opportunity to interview that person and ultimately be able to hire someone who has a disability like that. Um, it also lets you reach, and this sounds counterintuitive, but you can reach people who don't live online. Meaning once you identify the people, you may have a physical presence somewhere, you may have recruiters that are finding people, but it gives you the ability to talk to those people who aren't living online and using technology all the time. And it gives you the opportunity uh, really to interview them and to establish that interview interview process. And I see I see a couple of questions. So let me let me just take take this question. See one question. It says, um, "What do you what do you recommend I provide the candidates before the interview to make it go smoothly?" Yeah, it's a great question. I'm actually going to talk about that. In fact, I'm going to talk about that here shortly. So I'll get back to that question. And then there's another question that says, "How can I make the other person comfortable enough to open up. And I'm gonna to touch on that one as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and keep moving, but I'll answer those two questions. Those are great questions. And there, there are a couple of questions that, that always show up. And sometimes we, we don't wanna ask the questions. So let's talk, let's talk about how you can leverage your process and maximize the technology. I mentioned that the technology is much more amazing and powerful than it used to be. But there are some things that could go wrong with your technology. One of the things is just the environment that you're in. You wanna make sure your environment is right for doing that video interview without a lot of distraction. You also wanna make sure that you've got good lighting. You, 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 you could watch any of these video uh, interview presentations and they're gonna talk about lighting. Yeah, I'm gonna specifically talk about natural lighting because that's gonna give that glow that you're looking for. You wanna also have additional lights and I'm not saying go out and spend a bunch of money on lights. Probably the lights or the positioning of your desk will give you more natural light and it would give you the ability just to brighten up the area um, that you're in. Minimize distractions, that's difficult because we're a lot of people are working from home and, and do the best that you can and give yourself a little bit of grace on distractions. I've tried to do the best I can today to minimize distraction. There's a cat and a dog in the house and you just never know when they're gonna decide to get excited. So some of the things that I could do is I could actually go into a bedroom and do this work, but that would mean I have to move all my equipment into the bedroom. And so I just decided to take a chance. So companies have been working remotely and everyone's been working remotely for a while. So they're gonna cut you a little bit of slack. These are just best practices. If you can do this, then do it. You also wanna be organized. One of the things that will allow you to feel better about the work you're doing is organize your environment, organize your desk, clear off all those stacks of papers. If you're like me, I've got stacks of papers all the time. So I clear them off before I get online, before I do an interview and before I'm in front of a camera. And then one of the things that you wanna be able to do, if you're on a one-on-one -on -one interview, you want to be able to look at the image of the person who is on the other side of the camera. There's a tendency for us to look at ourselves. And when we're looking at ourselves, one, I'm not sure how much you like looking at yourself, but it's not my, my favorite thing to do. Uh, but if you will look at the other person and their image, that will help you stay focused as you're doing that, that interview. And then 
raise your camera a little bit. A lot of times we have our cameras and they're low and they're, they're down. And so your head is always down. Therefore, your voice is projecting down. Raise the camera up so that it's at least eye level. I raise mine a little bit higher than eye level. And then if you've got a crazy chair, just be, be prepared because my chair sometimes drops. And that means I drop much lower than I want to be. But raise that chair um, and don't put it don't put it below you. Um, you also want to make sure that you clean the lens on your camera. I don't know how many times you reach out and clean, clean the lens on your camera, but I don't do it very often. And it typically um, causes my image to be blurred out. And if you've got an autofocus camera, you just have to make sure you, you understand how that's going to work. The big thing about this is to make sure that you're, you're practicing, right? When you practice, you'll be able to see the video, record yourself a couple of times talking to make sure you have great audio, make sure your video is clear. We're not talking production ready stuff. We're just talking about the basics to make sure that you have the quality of the video and the audio that, that you're looking to see. And then just avoid distractions. If you've got a phone, if you've got notifications on your, on your computer, I had a notification go off a second ago and it kind of threw me off. So if notifications are going off, turn those off. Put on your do not disturb. If you've got a phone, which we most of us have, uh, move it away. I moved my phone away and I turned off the ringer and I turned off the notifications. So it's just little things like that that will allow you to leverage that technology and keep it from distracting you as you're, as you're going along. And so if you're using any of the email uh, products that pop up and give you um, notifications, make sure you turn those things off uh, when you go. So let me look at, let me get to this next, next slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, mitigating bias in the interview. Before I, before I talk about that, um, I wanted to, to, to address the, the conversation that, that came up, the question that came up about um, what do I recommend I provide the candidates with before the interview? You want to give the candidates all the information that you could possibly give them. It's not giving the answer to the test, but you want to let them know what's expected in the interview. You want to let, get, make sure that they have the link to the interview tool that you're using. And there are lots of tools out there for interviewing. And I have a list of them that I'm happy to share. And you want to make sure you give them instructions on try to log in, try to test the interview, get interview software, get familiar with the interface and don't get distracted or don't be afraid if you don't use interview technology all the time. Just let them practice. And then you want to also make sure they have the job description and as much information as you possibly can about what's important about the job so that they can then go and, and practice and prepare. And so you want to let them prepare for these interviews because it's not a test. It's not a quiz. You're trying to have a conversation and if you treat it like a conversation, both on the candidate side, as well as on the interviewer side, it just makes it go much smoother and goes um, much, if you get much more out of the conversation. And then this is a little bit along the lines of the question around how can I make the other person comfortable enough to open up? And so one of the things that you wanna be able to do is if you give them that information to prepare, they're going to spend time preparing. So they're automatically going to be more comfortable when they come in because they understand what the process is going to be. Um, the other thing is early in that interview, just have a conversation with them. Uh, use inclusive language. And certainly there, there, are, there are a lot of resources out there. There's some inclusive interviewing practices that you can do. There are other things that allow you to have that conversation make sure that you've read their resume, make sure they, they know who's gonna be interviewing them so they can get more comfortable and do some research on the interview and be prepared for that. Um, and then in these interviews, and this gets into a little bit of how you mitigate bias in the interview, because one of the things that's gonna help you is if you've mitigated that bias in the interview process, um, that's gonna allow you to avoid some of these bias traps. And so one of the things that you wanna do is limit jokes, right? Don't be funny in the interview. You can be relaxed. And if you've got a joke that's kind of funny, um, you can say it if you're good at delivering it and you've had it vetted by other people who, are, yeah, that's inclusive. People aren't going to take offense. My answer, I'm not a good joke teller, is that 
no jokes. Don't tell any jokes. Just limit that uh, and just move it out of your area. But another way to make people comfortable is just have a little bit of small talk, not a lot. And don't, don't think that all the small talk about where you're from and all those things, that's not the kind of small talk we want to have is how was your, um, how was your, how's your day going? Very basic things. Talk a little bit about the weather if you want to, but don't get into too many, too many details that are going to expose information that might create bias on, on your part. And we all go with our first impression. So the first impression, I'm saying don't trust your gut and don't trust your instinct because now you've got the person on camera. You might see something. You may not like the color they're wearing. You don't like the background that they've got. You don't like their accent. Whatever it is, that's going to create bias in the process. And just be careful of that unconscious bias that is going to show up when you do the interview. You just have to be able to mitigate it and stay focused on, on the actual interview. And so those are a few things that, that you can take a look at. And then certainly if you have an opportunity, um, watch a YouTube video or take uh, a course on inclusive bias, unconscious bias, and, and specifically if you get the opportunity to do an inclusive bias workshop or interviewing workshop, uh, definitely do that. Uh, the other thing you wanna do is a lot of times interviewers, we want to get through the interview as quickly as we can because we cluttered our schedule. And so now you're pressed for time and you want to get out of that video interview as quickly as you can. I'm saying give yourself enough time before that interview and after that interview so that you can prepare for the interview, read the person's resume. That's another thing that's going to make them comfortable and make them feel like you are actually investing time is read the resume. These are all general interview tips. Um, definitely more important when you do an inclusive and you do a video interview because that's what that's what you've got in front of you. And you always want to be able to um, ask yourself when you are interviewing candidates, if it doesn't appear that you're getting diverse candidates in your interview loops, you want to go back to the recruiting team or wherever the source of the candidates are and ask, hey, I noticed that we're not getting a lot of diversity in our interview loops. What's the market look like? Are we getting candidates to apply to our roles? I would like to interview more diverse candidates and have a diverse slate. Not a, not a quota, but you want to have, because you have the ability now to reach a broader, a broader demographic in a broader uh, location, uh, and you can extend your company, your company brand and who you hire by getting that diverse slate that may not be in your, your local geography, especially if you can have a remote job. So those are some of the things. Let me look at, let me look at some of these questions. And I know we're coming on time. Um, here's one that says, uh, can you share um, stories about interviews you've had in your career? I've had a ton of interviews in my career, both as a candidate and as, a, as an interviewer. And probably one of the one of the most memorable interviews that I had was when I first got into the corporate world. I interviewed with a company that had a very strong set of competencies that they leaned on. And my communication style was to be more we and more my team and not I. And the company was looking for me to talk about what did I do? And I was talking about it in a way that said, this is what our team did. Although I was in charge of it and driving the whole thing, I wasn't aware of that. And so as an interviewer, you want to be able to dig in a little bit when a candidate is giving you, we are our team, and you want to ask them, what was their role in the process? And as a candidate, you want to be able to say, our team did this, and this was my role, if, if they don't ask you for that information just so they know what you did and what you accomplished. And let me look, I uh, see a question here is, how do you deal with technical issues during an interview, specifically from the candidate side? I think it affects your hiring decision. Now, I, that's a great, a great question. And the way you deal with the technical issues, and this applies to both the candidate as well as the interviewer, the company's interviewer is, you want to test, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these, but you want to test your technology ahead of time. You want to make sure you have a backup plan. So I would say that the, the company 
should also have, in addition to the interviewer platform, they should also have a backup phone number in the, in the event that all the technology blows up and you have to go back to the phone. And so have a backup plan and understand that. But as a candidate, test that. Get on and practice with someone. Make sure that you, you download, if there's an app for, the, for, for one of the platforms or there's a browser option, always use the app that was designed for the product because some of the browser, when you go in with the browser, some of the, the specific functionality that's available in the app is not available in the browser. So get yourself in a position to, and give yourself time a day before or two days before to make sure that everything is downloaded that you need and that you've got the latest version. I've been on interviews before where I didn't have the latest version and some problem was fixed, a bug was fixed, and I didn't have that bug, I didn't have that information and I didn't have the latest latest version. And so, so those are some of the things that you want to look at to prepare yourself technically as a candidate. Um, and then I see another question here. Uh, it says, what is the best way to ensure that our process accommodates the needs of everyone? Yeah, you wanna make sure that your process is, is open and fair and consistent. And the video interview process allows you to do that even better than a, an on-site interview. One, you can create a sheet that tells every candidate what the technology is, what to expect during the interview. You can also make sure that you, if you record these interviews, and this is something that a lot of companies are, are not willing to do, but there are platforms that will do the recording. In fact, most of the video platforms will do recording. Record those interviews so your interviewers can see what happened, and you can also see differences between the interviews and get more consistency. Consistency. Have a checklist, cre create a checklist that allows you to check off all the steps and then just practice it. It takes practice whether you're the interviewer or whether you're the candidate being interviewed. It's going to take practice, practice to prepare for that. And so those are some of the things that you can do. I'm looking, I don't see um, any questions here. So I'm going to, one of the things I want to talk about is how you get the most out of your interviews. One of the things that you want to do is you've got to make sure that you've got the right mindset, whether you're the interviewer or the candidate, make sure that you've got the right mindset. And what I mean by that is you need to make sure that you've collected your thought. You give yourself enough time before that interview to really think about what you're going in and do. Work on your breathing, try to be calm, Try to be confident, have some water near you so that when you get dry mouth, you can go ahead and take a drink out of it and practice getting the first 60 seconds of that interview right. Because if you get the greeting right and you know why you're there and you know who you are, I always say jokingly, you know your name, you know why you're here and you know what you're looking for. If you get those three things down, that will make a huge difference. Do your homework ahead of time because that'll get you in the right frame of mind. But this is a mindset thing. Interviewing is all about this mindset and they're certainly going to drill in and get more information. But do your homework. Not only the candidate do the homework on the company, but the, the interviewer do the homework on the candidate as in read the resume, candidate, look at the company page, candidate, tailor your resume for the job that you're looking for and have keywords in there that match what the company is looking for. And then both the candidate and the interviewer, practice your elevator pitch because candidates are interviewing today. Uh, you've got to sell them because there's so many opportunities out there that you want to have that elevator pitch down and know how to sell that candidate and know what you're looking for and why the job is open. And for the candidate, you want to know, why do you want this job? What do you bring into the table? And make sure that you're prepared. Um, and then, like I said, always test the technology, write down three to five questions, always have questions because the interviewer is going to ask you a lot of questions. But as a candidate, have those questions prepared and have them near you uh, and then build, build on the rapport. Make sure you've got all kinds of things that are going to allow you to feel comfortable about it. And in, in a few of the things I've talked about, I want to talk about some wrong things to do. 
Do not overthink preparation for the interview. That's going to stress you out. Uh, don't surround yourself with notes and all these, these pieces of information and cheat sheets that you can look at. It's okay to have a few notes, uh, but don't have stickies everywhere because you're going to be looking for things that you could just prep for and be able to answer. Um, I talked about the web-based version versus the app. Make sure you use that. Uh, and don't be too casual. Understand what that company's culture is. How do they dress? And I say dress one notch above what you think they're asking for, or at a minimum, dress to the level that you believe that company, and just ask the recruiter. The recruiter will tell you what their attire normally is. And then you can you can make an informed decision on what, what you're going to do. Um, don't be a statue. Use your arms. Use your hands. Don't get crazy with it. Um, lean in when you have an opportunity to show that, hey, I'm really listening to this. Uh, be comfortable. Just don't sit there and be a statue, right? You might not necessarily be uh, an overzealous, outgoing, extroverted person, but just make sure that you show them, yes, I'm interested in this role. Um, and then stay positive, right? Never bash your current employer and don't be afraid uh, to fail on questions that you get asked that um, maybe you you didn't know the answer for and you didn't, didn't prep for. Um, so, so that's a wrap for today. I just want to give you a few final tips to, that you can take away because I know I shared a lot of information, but the key is make sure you have pre you prepared for the interview, do some research both on the employer side and on the on the candidate side, test the conf test the technology, and then work on your mindset around the interview and your confidence, and then just give yourself a break when things go wrong. So I'm gonna that's all I have to share. Let me look to see if there are any questions. I've got to thank you. Uh, yeah, no, thank you very much, Samantha. I really appreciate you all taking the time to join here. And we'll have this video available to you on our YouTube channel. Uh, and you want to click and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then we'll have it up on, have it up on Facebook. So take care. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us.